Welcome back to Canadian Justice, where we're discussing Canada's Arctic safety and security uh, in light of the rising aggression from Russia. Tom, since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, has Canada taken any new measures to assert claims of sovereignty or enhance our security of the Arctic? And if not, should they? Well, uh, prior to the invasion, Canada finally uh, submitted its uh, claim to the UN Commission on, uh, on the continental shelf across the Arctic Ocean. So that was pre, but I, it's very good that we've got that in. Uh, and we might well have a discussion going forward because there are overlapping claims with, uh, with Russia. But since the uh, uh, in invasion, um, uh, NORAD had an exercise in the, uh, in the uh, Arctic um, uh, to remind everybody that we're part of an alliance. And of course, the budget talked about a, a new uh, defense uh, review, a uh, new defense white paper. And I'm sure that the Arctic and of course Russia will change the whole context of the 2017 paper. So direct actions, uh, not really but a much heightened awareness and the Minister of Defence, I think, is visiting the Arctic uh, region of Canada very soon. Whitney, there have been some politicians talking about building more military bases in Canada's Arctic. What, what is the military presence there now? And is it sufficient to deter any threat from, from Russia or from any of the other Arctic uh, nations? So yes, there, we've seen indications, uh, certainly the recent budget, committing money for the modernization of the North Warning System. This will be a significant investment as part of layered integrated defense and deterrence in which the Arctic forms a part of continental defense. Minister Anand indicating a massive investment in over the horizon radar to improve our domain awareness. Also a uh, decision by the Liberals to pursue the, the F-35, to proceed with that as a new airframe. Those are all significant capabilities. The F-35, for example, to be operable out of our forward operating locations will probably require some enhancements to the infrastructure and the airfields in the Arctic. Certainly there are uh, some plans on the books to see an expanded military footprint in the Arctic as part of Northern operational support hubs. Hopefully these initiatives will be aligned with well-established uh, priorities identified by territorial premiers, by Inuit leaders to help address some of the dramatic inequities in the north. So we may actually see some, some synchronization between civilian agendas and military agendas in these investments. But I think that we will see a, a much greater attentiveness to the Arctic. And that will include having the ability for a more persistent presence in the Arctic. But I don't expect us building massive bases that will be permanently you know, populated uh, across the Arctic. Rob, what's your view on this? And, and can you give us a sense of how uh, Canada's military presence in the Arctic compares to some other countries? It doesn't. I mean, to be blunt, um, <laughs> if we go through, once again, you know, on Whitney's point, the only thing the government has said is it is considering new ways of modernizing NORAD. And it's been saying that it's gonna do that since 2021. It will now discuss things with Lougheed to, to, to see if it can choose the 35. So we're hearing a lot of talk and this isn't all that much different from what starts with strong, secure and engaged. The critical point here, and I really wanna make this strongly, is that the Americans after the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2014 started re-examining their Arctic strategy very carefully. And they now have strategies for the Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and they're gonna have a national strategy. They've also more importantly, re been developing their capabilities. Nome is gonna be made into a deep waters harbor. We're gonna see over the horizon, horizon uh, uh, radars that are being constructed. The critical point, People like Senator Sullivan are very aware of the fact that the Canadian contribution so far has only been taught. We haven't actually got anything that we've done. Sullivan has become very critical and we run the risk here that if the Americans start thinking that we are not doing anything, if we're not pulling our part on any of these important issues, that in fact, what's gonna happen is the Americans are gonna feel that they're gonna have to do it for us. And then we start running into really 
challenging sovereignty issues in terms of the Americans try to provide for what they perceive as a necessity for providing for North American security in the Arctic region. And so the question of American rearming, renuclearization to meet what they see a rising Russian threat is probably going to be one of the most confounding problems that our political leadership has refused to even acknowledge it exists, but is one that's going to be really problematic. Really fascinating conversation. We've got to go to a commercial break now, but when we come back, I want to ask Tom about the civilian population of the Arctic, if it matters in terms of asserting sovereignty claims and how it compares to some of our Arctic neighbors. We'll be right back. Mm-hmm. 